All right, we're live. Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Good morning. I'm uh, just getting my my paints right here. Turning off my phone. That's always important. <laughs> As we know, that can be very distracting in the middle of a project. And so let me put this camera in the right place. Make sure that everybody can see really well what I'm going to be doing. And so we'll back up a little so you can see my my frame. For those of you that uh, might be watching for the first time, what this canvas is, I, I uh, just took some scrap boards out of my backyard and nailed them to the wall and just built a box with plywood. So, so this is a nice hard finish. I'm used to painting murals with you know, uh, wall paints out of cans. And, and so I'm used to having a hard background that's that uh, can take abuse. And so I I put that board on there and it has a little bit of overhang to it. I made the plywood go out past the frame so that I can clip these, put these clamps on. It's just these squeeze clamps from, from uh, the hardware store. So that I can cycle through these canvases right on the wall and not have to have them stretched on bars so this has been a fun experiment first first time i've done something like this okay so let's see if there's uh any any preliminary things to talk about i uh before i get started i really reviewed the previous live stream videos and i feel like i'm just such a sucker for those of you that are so nice to me and encouraging and and you boost me on with my creativity but then i just start flying through the painting change direction oh i have this idea let's do that and so victor victor calisto left a comment on the live chat that i very much appreciate he said i'm trying to follow along and you keep changing direction and you move too fast and uh, I was realizing that's very true. So I think that uh, it's important to make this followable. So I'm going to back up. We're going to have a good plan. So that picture that I sent out on the email list and that I have for the thumbnail of this video, that is the picture that I'm going to be painting. And that's not to say we can't add things. And I can add other things to it. I just don't want to do any more of those like hard changes of direction where suddenly we're painting a dinosaur over the top of, <laughs> of the things that people are maybe trying to catch up on. So uh, maybe I will put that put that big lizard in there uh, at the end. We'll, we'll do things, fun things like that at the end of the project instead of right in the middle. OK, uh, uh, Ariel says, hi, from the Netherlands. All right, cool. I'm watching while cooking. So. I hope you don't mind a few splashes on the screen. <laughs> all right. No, I don't mind at all. If you don't mind a few splashes of paint, I don't mind a few splashes of cooking. Darlene says hello from East Tennessee. All right. Cool. Tennessee is so beautiful. I was so impressed when I went uh, to Knoxville. It's raining, so my landscape can wait, and I can have my lunch with you. All right. Well, thank you for including me. Uh, during your lunch. And uh, so we've got hello from Florida. All right, another place I have yet to go visit. I hear that uh, art is pretty, pretty big deal there in Florida. And that murals, you can do really well with murals. It seems like I get a lot of interest from that area and I still have yet to go there. Chicago, all right, all right. I've been to Chicago because we had family there. And uh, so that was that was really fun going and visiting that the windy city, right? Or the, I saw it was called the city of broad shoulders because of the workers that built the city. Always use you as a reference for friends who want to learn to paint. Oh, thank you, Amanda. Thank you very much. That's a, a, a nice compliment. I do a lot of research. I have a hard time completing paintings because that's not where the thrill is for me. I do a lot of research in order to find answers. I need to improve in the way of staying on course to a nice finished painting. I was finally going to buy those uh, Allbirds this morning, those all Allbirds this morning, but 
Then I got the notification about your painting. So maybe I'll go barefoot. Oh, that must be kind of shoe. A few, well, thank you very much for, for doing that. Wow, you would go barefoot for me? Wow, thank you. Hello from Iowa. Okay, cool, let's get started. So I want you to be able to paint along with me at any time you want because this is gonna be permanently posted and you can go back and follow along if you wanna paint this picture. So I'm gonna do this in a paint along style, but since we've got time and multiple episodes to fill, we're just gonna make this a lot, a lot more, uh, uh, add a lot more content. I didn't wanna say more detail because I don't wanna scare you off. This isn't, we're gonna get real intricate with detail. We're gonna add a lot more content than what you would do on a typical paint night where you know have a glass of wine, someone walks you through a craft. I think those are super fun and I've uh, hosted them a few times. But we've got time to put into a nicer finished product here where I can actually do some uh, some good teaching as well, explaining and answer some some of those good questions that always pop up. And so I want to go through the materials real quick and uh, you can download for free getting started with materials and paint from my website front page of my site to see the typical paints I use I like to paint out of a can these are from the paint store this is a Sherwin Williams uh, brand paint but get house paint it's just house paint any kind of brand paint the colors I'm working with are bright yellow okay I'm going to use this for highlights bright red I'm going to use this also for uh, for mixing, doing reflection. I'll show you. I don't need to tell you what I'm using it for at the moment. I'm just going to uh, tell you these so that if you want to get set up and follow along. I've got maroon, and so this is a similar. Someone uh, emailed and talked about some confusion with this color. I'm trying to tip it sideways so you can really see that see inside of the can. It's like a dark red orange, like rust, the color of rust, maybe a little more red. So maroon, if you get it, if you find just a pigment that is maroon, it's going to be a, a, a more saturated color, less gray than if I were to take an orange and add black, right? So this is, is like a primary. I call them primaries for that reason because I can't make them. I can make something close, just like I can make a red by mixing magenta and yellow, but it's not gonna be as red as this red. Okay, so uh, I've got pure black, pure white, and uh, again, I'm just working out of these quart cans, and then phthalo blue and phthalo green. Did I already show you those? Phthalo blue and phthalo green. Now I'm gonna show you uh, some some acrylic. Oh no, I always, I, I did that before too. I buried them under the computer, I can't get them out. So if you're using tubes of acrylic, those are, the uh, colors that will be very similar to what I'm using. Uh, cadmium bright yellow, uh, bright cadmium red, phthalo blue, phthalo green, maybe a Mars black, uh, or I don't know, any black, lamp black, Mars black, anything that's real dark. Pure white, titanium white, and uh, the, uh, what was the other one? I, maroon, maroon. And so, uh, that one I think is also called red oxide in a lot of pigments, which it seems after doing some reading is not used as much these days because it has lead, has lead in it or something like that. So I'm going to use a big brush. And if you follow along, I recommend using a smaller brush, smaller canvas. I'm, I'm using this big surface so that it's easy for you to see and I can cover the whole screen. So I'm going to move this a little bit closer so that we can see everything I'm doing here. And we'll go up a little bit to the sky first. Go right in here. And let's make sure that we're up as high as we can go, that you can see this. OK, now I'm going to be keeping an eye on the live chat while I work and scanning for any questions that come along. I'm gonna start with the sky and we're quickly going to work our way to the background cliffs, desert rocks, some greenery, then moving down 
to the water. And I'm thinking that because I kind of did a, a redo, I backed up and painted over what I had started. A lot of you had been watching all that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did it. But I feel even more sorry that I tricked people into thinking they could paint along and then rapidly changed the direction and went crazy with the picture. So, so I want to respect the, uh, the time, those of you that are following along. And so uh, what was I saying? Uh, we're going to start with the sky. Maybe it'll come to me. I, I merged one thought into another. The way I started that sentence was not the way I finished it. <laughs> Story of my life. Oh, yeah, big brush. And so that's because I have such a big canvas, but my small brush looks like this. And, and uh, this is my favorite brush to use. I'll use this for most of the painting. This is a one inch. Uh, it, Purdy is the brand, but uh, all kinds of different paint, uh, paint companies make brushes that look like this. Just standard cut brush for contracting, and it's one inch. And so now uh, I'll show you the, the smaller. I have a detail brush that you can get. Now just look, just just look at that getting started with materials and paint. You'll see the brush. I've got that information in lots of my videos. Just a small angled brush is all you need. That's the only brush I'm using for this painting. To do the sky, I'm gonna go like this. I need lots of white. So the first thing I'll do, and actually I'm gonna open up my gallon of white. So if you're using a tube, I recommend doing this. You just take that tube and you just squeeze it right onto the canvas. Make yourself a big bead because a big bead of paint will not dry quickly. If you put it on a palette first, then it's likely that it'll start drying before you even get to your canvas. So I start by applying and then I blend after I apply. So you can do this with a little brush in the exact same manner that I'm doing it right now. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, Maybe I'm looking at the exposure on the camera. I'm going to go just a touch down on exposure so that we can see this better. Let's see if we can go over here and take the gain down just a bit. There, I think you'll be able to see better like that. Ah, there you go. Okay, so maybe I'll brighten it up if it looks like it needs it later. I put white on first. And, <laughs> hi. <laughs> so I've got three brush loads of white. And a brush load is like this. You can do this with a little brush just the same. One side of the brush, other side of the brush on a different place. So I don't do it on the same area. I don't go one, two. I unload one side, go over to another area, unload the other side. Now all of this paint that's going to start dripping down my canvas is not drying quickly. And so this is one way that I combat quick dry time. I need time to blend my paints. And so the way I buy myself time is by putting a lot on there and waiting until I'm ready to blend it. Okay, so now look at how small is the amount of this phthalo blue. I'm just gonna call it phthalo blue even though they don't necessarily call it that at the paint store, but the way it dries, the way it looks, that's, that's what I would use if I was using a tube. So if you just ask for a blue pigment from the paint store, just say, I want just uh, only that pigment in an ultra deep base. That's what I always do. Let's put blue on there. And I'm going to put one more brush load of blue. And so this is just a small brush load. My, my can is not very deep. So just put the tip of the brush in. Not nearly as much blue as white because I need the sky to be nice and light. And when I blend this, I'm going to make sure I leave white spots. So in order to make brighter clouds sooner in my picture without having to go over the top of wet blue paint, I'm just going to leave light spots. I'm going to put maybe patches of blue up here and, and maybe less and less as I go down here. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to do one more brush load of white. So what is that all together? One, two, three, four, maybe five brush loads of white to maybe one brush load of blue. So then let's take this blue and put more of it up high and it's mixing with the white. And then I'm going to be careful to not put that blue everywhere. Here I'm just going to leave it real light because it's going to be much easier 
to paint clouds over those light spots. And I'm letting the, I'm just letting the way I plopped the paint on there decide where my clouds are gonna be. Let's take some of this white, put it there to spread out this blue. Okay, and then let's go like this. So have fun painting a big, messy blue and white sky. It already looks like sky and clouds just by having more white down here and more blue up there. It just immediately starts taking, taking on the look of a impressionistic blue sky with clouds. So I'm just gonna put a few more dabs on here where I see real streaky texture. So I'm not too worried about the shapes that I have, but uh, here's where I wanna try to identify uh, a lot of little brush line. Like this, I can really see a lot of brush lines. So I'm just targeting areas like that, trying to smooth them out so this looks like atmosphere more than, than texture. I'm gonna have a lot of texture in my painting. If I have a lot of texture in the sky, like real small, fine texture, brush strokes, it can make the sky look more 2D, you know? It kind of flattens it out. It looks like it goes back if I, if I smooth it out. So now I'm just going over my paint that is now drying much more quickly. And so if I just take that brush as this is starting to dry and go back and forth over it a few times, then I'm gonna get some nice wispy background clouds to start me out. And then down here, I'm gonna turn the brush this way so that I get a little bit of perspective, flatter shapes toward the horizon, just like I would do on the ground. And look how it drags the blue right through the white. That's kind of fun how it does that. I could just leave it right here. And this sky would be already more than what I put. You can see there's no clouds in the, in the sky that I painted the first time, but I thought it would be fun to do some sort of clouds. People like clouds, myself included, love clouds. So let's put a little bit in here. I'm just making sure I get my, get my blue areas to show. And so now I'm gonna move on. The only thing that I don't love is how this is right smack in the middle. So let's go. I do try to stick with the age old principle principles <laughs> that have been in uh, our schools for years. Don't paint right in the middle. Don't put something right. In the middle. Something's got to go in the middle. You can't just do nothing, you know, but I uh, am notorious for doing things by subject. I'm just thinking about how do I achieve this look and I forget. Well, composition matters too. So I'm just going to kind of drag this stuff over a little bit like this. Make it look not like it's just bright spot in the center. Okay, so now I'm thinking that I'll take some of this blue and make a few puppy clouds right to start with. Just by laying the laying the brush down, I get more of an edge, and I'll move it closer and let you see this technique. So I can just grab some of this blue and lay the brush down just to get sharper edges on the top of the cloud. Then I can put these, these little clouds that kind of hover across the, the uh, light background. So it's fun to put dark clouds over the light clouds, just like you can put light clouds over the darker sky. All we're gonna use for this sky is red, white, and blue. That's all we're using. And so, I have yet to break into the red. I'm going to use that to make some shadows. And I'll show you, show you how you can do that. I just like kind of getting a nice soft background in there first. That's, that's kind of fun. Okay, so now, why don't I get a, uh, I don't really need a smaller brush yet. I'm just going to stay with my bigger one and show you how to put a, a real quick, big bright puffy cloud in there. So when I'm painting the sky, I I uh, keep it real light. Remember it dries darker. So when this dries, it's gonna be bluer. So, you know, if you go back to this beginning after we've recorded for a while and this is dry, you'll, you'll see a visible difference where this is lighter 
it'll be darker and bluer when it dries. And I think that's just because the, the pigment kind of uh, gets more concentrated as the water evaporates out. So now what I want to do is get some pure white and make the bright edges on one of my already light spots. So let's just make some some puffy shapes on the edge of this this guy right here going up there and then let's just make it coming over here and there's a little bit of shadow on that edge now that's good that's good i don't mind that little bit of shadow on the edge one bit and i've got this this shape to my brush sorry it's way over there i've got this shape to my brush stroke this uh direction that i'm kind of swooping it like this a little bit of a a round path and I'm doing it with this long end right here. I put that, that's the part that touches and it kind of drags like this to just real quickly put some of that, those little bits of blue in there and give me this textured, textured edge. And so then if I put a little bit of blue and red in here, it's gonna create a shadow under this cloud. So let's get a little more light first. Good morning, Joe, and everyone says Berta. All right. Is that Berta? Yeah, Berta. Cool. Good to see you too, Berta. Thanks for tuning in. Did I miss the finish of the other painting? Nope, it's a do over. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like the bearer of bad news when I see that. But the reason is because I was leaving too many people behind with the method of just spontaneously creating. And so uh, I sent out a email with the picture the final picture that I'm going to be working towards so that this is much more followable and in a step-by-step -step format. Okay, so we've got a couple clouds in here. Let's go way up off the picture. I think it'd be cool if, if uh, these clouds just disappeared right off the edge. We'll just put a, put a bit of white just going right up there. And then we'll put another cloud coming down behind this one kind of getting ahead of myself because I want to put some shadow on there. So I'm going to put this brush aside and actually I'm going to still use it. This brush is working good right now. So I'm going to get rid of, I always do this when I'm near the beginning of a painting, I'll just get rid of excess paint that I don't want. If I get too much of my blue in there and I want to go to white, I'll just do that. Get rid of it down there. You don't have to do that. It, it does build up. If you do that enough times, you get a lot of texture on your, <laughs> on your canvas. But you know, I got I got stuff to create. I can't be worrying about that. I gotta move fast. <laughs> so we're gonna put a little bit of red in the bottom of this cloud. Now that feels wrong, doesn't it? Let's put blue in there too. And so this brush is barely small and it's almost too big to even fit in my court can. So uh, just do this exact same thing if you're working with a small brush. So here is my shadow color. I'm going to carefully put this at lower center. So bottom center of a cloud is where I have most of the shadow. And it's going to find its way up. Let's put a little bit more red in there. So I want just enough red that it becomes visibly a, a little more purple and gray looking. So it's important that it's red and not the magenta that I use a lot for, for uh, making more vivid purple colors. This red makes a very gray violet, and I really like it for doing the shadows on clouds. So the sky tends to be a lot more turquoise, and the way we can get that relationship is by putting a little bit of this, this red into the shadow color. So I wanna let you know how I, how I do this blending. I put my color in the middle of my area that I want to blend the shadow into. And I don't just keep going uh, across the whole thing. I gradually work my way out without going back. Because once I go back to the middle, my brush has dark color on it. And you're going to see that 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 uh, makes it hard to get a nice gradual gradient to the edge of your cloud. So I want to get lighter and lighter as I go up and out. And so now I'm gonna go, now that I've got my gradient, I'll go back to the center to lighten it, but I won't take that dark color to the edge again. I'll get rid of the paint down here, just like I did a minute ago. We'll do it here so that you see, get rid of that excess paint. 
And if you want to just grab a piece of cardboard or some scrap material so that you're not destroying the texture of your canvas, I think that's great. Okay, so put some shadow in here and we'll bring this down like this. And then let's just go from shadow to light again. Let's put a little bit more, little more white in there and make another bright spot on this cloud, just popping right out here, just popping out. So I love how blue colors just sink right back, whether it's a blue violet or a blue blue, you know, it just sinks right back into the picture. And I can just splash white on top of it and get this depth. So now I'm just going to make a more complex cloud by kind of blending this shadow in some of these edges, but then leaving this edge separate. So maybe it looks like it goes maybe down and out again. Maybe some more white right here along this edge coming down from behind that part. Like this, let's go across and maybe let's put a little more of that red in there, get a little more shadow. So this is too much. I do this all the time. And again, use use just a scrap uh, piece of trash or something to get rid of excess paint. You know, I dip my brush. I had more red than I want. I just want a little bit. If the sky is still wet, then you can just mix that red right in with that sky color. Okay, then I'm going to gradually blend this up into these clouds like this and Maybe go down here, and this one is more red than this one. Let's see if we can flip-flop these colors a little bit. There we go. So the, the white kind of comes forward, and all I'm doing is right now I see really heavy spots. I'm just lightly touching them with, with the uh, brush so that they don't sag, you know, with, with this kind of paint, if you use house paint, like I'm using wall paint, then it can it can really sag when you, when you go heavy with it. So I gotta go just heavy enough. And that's one reason I buy a more expensive paint too. It's, it's heavier bodied, it, it doesn't drip as much. I'm gonna put a little more white and then I'm gonna be done with these clouds. I think, I think just this, this little bit that I put in here is great for the background of my picture. So I don't need to have the whole sky filled with clouds. Just, just a splash, you know, just a splash of something interesting up there. And I like to, I'm always experimenting, looking for new, new shapes and uh, things to create when I'm painting clouds, trying to keep it interesting, you know. And so it's fun just to see, well, if I put white here, what's gonna happen if I, just kind of put some streaming off there. I don't know. Sometimes cool, cool new shapes and textures pop up and new techniques are born just by putting lots of paint on the canvas and having fun stirring it around. <laughs> I can hear your thoughts when I say that. Yeah, maybe for you, Joe. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to put a little bit of white. You can put perspective, last thing on the clouds, a little bit of perspective. Anywhere I put this bright white and I leave the top edge sharp, but I blend the bottom edge right here. It makes a cloud dropping down behind another cloud. And so I can go over and put perspective on my sky with this method. So I'm just going to make an edge of white, blend that, maybe take this cloud out a little more so it looks like it just fades out into this happy blue sky. And then I'm gonna go over here and put a couple more of those little white edges and watch the perspective that's created when I do a few of those across this sky. So we'll put some, put some right in here too. Bright white edge, we'll put a bright white edge right here. I'm gonna put some right down here at the bottom. Bright white edge here. So in this painting, I'm gonna stay away from any kind of intricate detail work, you know, I'm using a big brush, it's just a direction. I'm gonna stick with just styles of brush strokes and carefully chosen colors to achieve the effects that we're after. Because I think it's a better 
a better experience to see the 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 power of those and then to be inspired about how much further you might be able to or want to take it after you see what just just having the colors in place can do all on its own so all i did was just blend the bottom edge and left the left the top edge sharper so i just blend down but not up just that lower edge and a lot of my techniques in painting are just identifying what what an edge means and what what i do with an edge you know i'm just thinking about well, what do i do with this edge okay okay thank you guys just joined in good to have you good to have you okay any other questions so far anything i can answer just put it there in the live chat and uh I'll glance back over here in a second. See if there's anything we need to cover. Now it's time to move down to our distant hills. And so we're gonna go right down here and I'll move a little closer. Let's go right about here. And then go right across there with some distant desert cliffs. Joe, greetings from Bulgaria. All right, cool, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Uh, uh, Israel, I think you know that language. Serbian. I had a friend from Serbia. He taught me to count, and I think maybe it's similar. So I don't know if everybody speaks the same language, but but uh, I remember learning a few things. Yadan, dva, tri, chitri, pet, šest, sedam, osam, devet, des. That's Serbian. I think it's the same area. My geography is bad. My wife, I think, went to Bulgaria. She visited there once. I would love to. Okay, thank you very much. Kathleen says it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go like this. Distant hills. Let's put a let's put white on and then we're going to need red and blue. So I'm going to do one brush load of white. I'm going to do one brush load of red. And I'm going to do a little bit less blue than red and so we're going to go in here and get some blue i'm going to see what that does for my mix on distant desert red rock cliffs so let's mix them together now i apply first and i mix after oh not enough blue i tried to nail it Tried to nail it on the first one, but not quite. We need more blue. So let's say equal parts red and blue, equal parts. I do want a good amount of red in there. I don't want to go too blue. Oh, well, now I feel like I went too far blue. Let's go more red, more red. Just think a red violet, a very red violet. And then after you get your red violet, you lighten it with white because we want to leave room for much darker shadows in the foreground. So shadows change much more dramatically than light light sources, you know, things that light is bouncing off of as things get buried in atmosphere. That's what we're doing to create depth. And a painting is using atmosphere to do that. I think that is the biggest tool for creating depth is atmosphere. And so I'm adding this white to and and blue to add atmosphere to this and make it further away. So I have to make sure that it's light enough now. So just think a little bit darker than your sky. And I'm going to put like a red rock shape. You know, we've got those mesas that stick up maybe a few pinnacles going up like this. And now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to get rid of this, stick this in the water. And for the rest of the painting, I think I'll be using this, this one inch because I want to do a little bit smaller details, but it's still a relatively big brush. So now the highlight color on these cliffs is going to be my maroon and white. So it's this right here. And I like just mixing it right on the surface because the paint stays wet for longer and you have lots of time. So I'll just go in here and start putting this on. Now it's gonna look wrong at first because it's, uh, because it's dark and it's not light, but here, let's just put it in, in a few places like this and just put little spots of it. You don't need a lot. 
and then hit it with white. Do the same thing right over those spots. And I like this technique because of the diversity of color it leaves. So put white exactly over the spots where you just applied. And so the technique I'm using, and I forgot to get this brush wet. I always like to work with a with the wet brush. So I'm gonna put water on that and kind of dab it out. I also keep a towel handy that I need to get. I keep a towel handy that I can wipe my brush. This is what I do constantly in between switching uh, colors is wipe off excess paint and then dip it in the water. After I dip it in the water, I wipe off that watery paint on that brush. Okay, so now I'm using this corner of the brush again. I use this most of the time. I did it with that huge one and I'm doing it with this one. It's the longest corner. And so I dip that longest corner in the white like this and I go over here and just hit these. Now I need to mix it. So I'm gonna go multiple times over the same spot until it starts to look like a brighter orange. If it doesn't get brighter, I just need more white. So I'm gonna grab some more white and I'm gonna go in here. And once I've got that color, let me get a little more here. There we go. Now I'm just gonna go in here and start really mixing up the shapes because I've got a color that's working for me. Let's go here, let's mix this in. And I can do this multiple times. Now, I can also just pre-mix it. Don't, don't, uh, don't hesitate to do things your own way if you want to pre-mix this light color, white and maroon, and add highlights that way. That, that'll work, it'll produce some real, real good results. I, I just like the diversity, like I said, that we get when we, when we mix those together like this. Okay, I'm gonna add more white. Now all these colors in a few minutes are gonna be a little more dark and vivid. So I always wanna just remember that. So there's more of that maroon. I'm gonna mix it with white right here on that surface. And I'm just putting shapes that are up and down to put kind of vertical cliffs on this. And you can see that I've, I've chosen to put my light coming from the left, but maybe just a little from the left. Maybe not like a hard, a hard left direction, you know, just a little bit from the left. And I've got those highlights there. Let's put a few more. I'm gonna leave this dark because I, I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna leave that. And here, maybe I'll just put a few little mix of it up along the top where the light is hitting the top of this, this mesa here. Like that. And let's make the, I'm just gonna grab some of this purple and make the top a little, a little more jagged now, just because I think it'll look good. No special scientific reason. I just think it'll look all right. I can go back in if, you, if you're a detail person and you like working with, with the shapes, you know, go back and forth, light shadow, light shadow. And the, the magic of making this immediately look like light and shadow on rocks is getting the color style. It's not, it's not the exact brush stroke and the shape and the technique. It, it is the colors, really the colors. So this is kind of a, a shortcut to really dialing in those colors is starting with that maroon using red and blue and white as a base. I just have to make sure I get light enough. I'm going to go a little bit lighter on these highlights. So now maybe, for a final layer of little highlights on that distant cliff. I'm gonna pre-mix. So we'll do this style now where we grab a paint palette and we're not gonna use that one. I gotta find one of my, my others. Okay, we're just gonna mix on a palette and get the same bright color. Look how red it looks, how pink it looks here, but not there, isn't that funny? That'll play tricks on you, you know. Another advantage to mixing right on my painting is that I, I feel like I get a better read on exactly what color I'm working with. So I've had I've had a color in the bucket when I put it on the wall. It's a different color. I mean, not really, but it's it's facing a different direction and and uh, gets different light on it. All of a sudden, it doesn't look the same. Okay. Little bit lighter on these highlights. I just mixed a nice light color that I'm gonna to touch the tops of my 
of my distant mountain with just little shapes on here like this Let's put a little more in here. And then look, this this might be fun. I can kind of make shapes. Watch, I'll make this come across. Make like a little ridge. Again, it's not it's not the exact shapes that I use. It's just having that, that color dialed in that makes that difference. I just thought it'd be cool if I kind of had a ridge going up right here. Coming down into here. Now I'm going to make cliffs. I'm going to make... Uh, Hills. So we have a lot of these where, where we'll have straight up and down cliffs like this. And then at the base, they swoop out like this. So I'm going to make a few of those. And the way I'm going to handle that is I'm going to put the maroon in place right here. And if that purple is still wet, then I don't need to reapply shadow color. But if it's dry, I might reapply the shadow color. So in that case, I would need this and I would make some white to get a highlight on this upward. This is facing up toward the sky now. So I'm going to make some ground by just going. And what I'll do is make that ground go up into one of these shadows. Comes right out from in between the cliffs this way. We'll go right up into this shadow like that. and go down like this and then if i want to put a little more shadow on the other side watch i can make these hills a little closer also if i reapply some shadow so let's take a little bit of blue maybe a little red so this was my shadow mix right i'm just grabbing a little blue and red and we're just going to put some dark shadow going right up into this And just keep the uh, keep the texture real, real horizontal, so that your brush strokes are skinny. My brush is this way. I've got nice skinny brush strokes, so in perspective, this is gonna cause my ground to come forward. So the texture really, really counts on this. And so I don't need to sweat over details if I just have a a brush stroke texture that really really gives a good impression of what I'm trying to paint, you know. So it's just an effect. It's just an impression. I just want a texture that says perspective is applied to this. It's coming forward and that sideways sideways brush stroke is what accomplishes that. Just side to side. And now watch this. This is fun. I'm going to go in here and put some little plants. So I'm just going to grab phthalo green. I could do blue too. Let's see what the green does though. This will be fun. I'm going to put little dots in here, just tiny little dots, and I'm putting them in rows along the ground. And what I'm going to do is keep dabbing over these until they are no longer very green. So what's going to happen when the green mixes with the more reddish colors, it's, it's going to lose its green. So let's get closer so you can see what I'm doing. But there's, there's no great detail to see here. They're just dots. They're just dots of green. And I'm going to keep dabbing over those dots until they're not as green anymore. And I'm going to keep putting them in new places where this more tan colored mix is. And I'm just going to keep going until I don't see that dark green anymore. I'm just seeing a more, a more uh, real gray, brown, purple color, whatever it, whatever it makes. And we're going to use this. We're going to use these same colors when we're doing all of that vibrant turquoise water in the foreground. So I'm just going in here and touching these with my brush. Here, let's be a little more aggressive because it's not it's not going away as quick as I thought it would. So let's just touch it a little bit more. There we go. So now there's not much of that phthalo green showing. It's mixed with this color. And now I've got the texture of real distant real distant bushes on there. So let's do a little bit more. This is kind of fun. Let's go in here and go our dirt color right here, our white, like 
like this and I'm going to slope the ground up like this. We're going uphill. I love how the valleys kind of sweep sweep around through the Arizona desert, you know. That's that's where the inspiration for this comes from. I'm trying to do like a red rock scene, but putting a fantasy spin on it. Okay, so now I'll put some some white in here and I just want to stay stay heavy enough that my paint's not going to dry super fast on me. And up in here, I'll probably probably use um, more background colors, maybe some blue up in there. But first, let's do let's do these little dots of bushes. So just real little dots going across here on this wet paint, and it's going to mix with that that color I just put on. And then it's no longer going to be so green. So we're putting it there, put it here. It'd be interesting to try blue. I bet phthalo blue would work just as well for this, for these really distant bushes. But uh, I think both of them will have have good results. Here, let's try blue on the more more distant. So I'm just going to keep going over this, over the real green looking areas so that it doesn't look so green anymore. And now I'm just gonna dab the tan areas in between. If I want little highlights in here, separate some of the little, what would be bushes. It's just a texture that feels like just distant distant green. Okay, now, how about I'm going to go up in here and put another even more distant cliff. So red and blue. And so yeah, that was my shadow color. I've got some right here that I can use. Could have just grabbed that. Red and blue. Now I'm going to use a little more blue and a little more white for cliffs that are more distant. The further I get, the more it becomes like the sky. And so when blue light mixes with something, it almost always turns a little bit more purple for whatever reason. Okay, we're gonna go like this, put the, put the top on this. I'm not even gonna bother putting any details on that. I'm just gonna leave a silhouette of some background hills and Maybe just form the top edge a little bit to my liking. Make something that just feels a little, little more random, a little more uh, organic. And then I'll grab some of this, this color, and maybe I'll just make this gradually go back into it. Watch, I'll take white, and maybe it'll get a lot of depth if I gradually make this color fade into that. But just along a thin line, just go back into that background. So you can create so much depth in a picture with these, these tiny, tiny little portions of space right here by the horizon. This is where, where uh, so much depth is created in a painting is on that, those couple of, couple of centimeters right across the, right across the horizon. You can get tons of depth. So I'm putting a little white in to lighten this, to lighten this background color. Then I'm just going to use real side to side brush strokes. And so now let's do, let's do a little bit more of those little, little bushes. So this is blue now. Let's try the blue. Do, 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 do. Just dot those in there. And for some reason, they do grow in rows. They kind of grow in rows and along the ridges. So if I go like this, if I take that color and I make those same little, little rows across here, then it's going to look like these natural strata layers where the plants kind of grow on top of them. So I have to make sure that it mixes. You know, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to do that technique, 
I've got to make sure that it is mixing with my colors underneath. I can't just leave it dark blue, you know. I just want to make sure. Now I'm going to kind of go over these areas where the light got in the shadow. Yeah, I make, you know, just some layers in my in my rock where the plants are maybe just growing up on top of some ridges. Let's do a little bit up in here too. Just little dots of blue, but because it mixes, it ends up looking like distant shrubberies. <laughs> All right, I wanna see a little more of those in here now, but we're getting kind of low, low in the picture. Maybe I should stop here. Let's put, uh, let's just put a little bit more. Nah, I'm gonna stop right there. I can always put more in later. And so uh, now down here, I want closer, I want closer uh, greens that kind of drop off. So yeah, I guess I do wanna go closer. So here, let's put another hill. Let's back up a little bit. Let's put that going to the edge too. He's not a portrait artist, so I doubt it. <laughs> doubt what? I didn't see where that came from. I like challenges. Okay. I actually uh, have been working really hard really hard on getting better at that exact thing. And if you want a really, what I think is a really helpful uh, lesson on, on uh, elements that create the lightness, if you really wanna get the lightness of a person, things that are easily uh, overlooked that you can miss. I've got a, a video of how to draw faces. And uh, I think you could, you could get a lot out of that. Just research, you know, I research, find answers. I think most of my work, is more a product of research and just attention focus than it is some some kind of raw talent you know okay so now i'm putting these colors on again i'm going to put my shadow color in there so a little bit of blue and red and i'm just making this hill and look it's closer so i can make a top on this hill that kind of goes up here Shadows get darker and darker as they get closer. So we'll go over here and start making this ground get brighter as it comes out this way. That's kind of a funny thing. In the art world, there's such pressure to be this or that kind of artist, isn't there? You relate to what I'm saying. You know this frustration. People say, hey, do another picture like that one. I like that one. But you've already been there, done that. You want to move on. I think uh, songwriters go through the same headache. But the patterns of the world, you know, say, what kind of what kind of box do you belong in? And you get you get put in uh, in categories unnecessarily, I think. And so you don't have to embrace that. I don't have to say, I'm a landscape artist. I don't have to say that. I've been spending a lot of time learning how to paint landscapes and some fun products have come out of that. And that's really as far as it needs to go for me. I don't care if I don't leave uh, any great paintings behind. And, you know, if I get inspired to be something else later in life, I reserve the right to just, just go for it. Okay, so now let's go like this. Put a little more of this. I'm just getting lots of paint on here to do these hills. Now let's try the blue. Let's see what the blue looks like for these little bushes. Just little dots everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. But I've got more paint on this time. I think it's going to mix better. The reason I'm thinking maybe the blue will give us a good effect is because it's darker. And when blue mixes with this with this browner color, this maroon, it will actually turn a, a little bit green. And so we'll get just enough green to be distant, distant bushes. And I'm just putting my brush down like this and working side to side, dabbing it, just dabbing it over my blue spots until they start to mix. 
start to mix in with that base color. So I don't really see blue anymore. I just see this mixed result. That is all of my distant vegetation. That's the word I was looking for, vegetation. I'm going to go like this and, and swoop it up at the edges a little bit too. Look, watch, we'll just kind of go up that little ridge. Remember how I put that ridge in there? Just put little dabs of that color. I'm going to put some coming down here too. Let me grab some of this blue. Go down there, grab some of this. Kind of just making slopes. Slopes going down here off the rocks into the shadows. Maybe grab some of that wet paint that's already there. Okay. Now I want to maintain some of my light light ground in between, so where I've kind of lost some of that, I'll go and put it back. Nice, light, distant dirt. And wherever I've got an edge that's kind of leaning, you know, facing this way, then maybe I'll put more of that highlight right there. Let's go for the red areas. Go for the more, more colored areas with this white. Just dab it in there. You can go back and forth and back and forth as much as you like. But in the end, I just want to keep a real horizontal texture. Don't, don't go up and down very far at all if you want to keep the, the nice, distant-looking perspective. Just stick with little short strokes in the up and down direction, just real short. I'm going to put a little more highlight right up in here. See this area? I'm going to go up on the edge of this this ridge a little bit more like that. I'm just gradually building this as I as I go, just looking for little things that pop out at me, but I kind of like the way this looks like it's catching the light as it goes up this hill. So I'm just gonna go, go like that, make a little hill coming out in front. And now we're gonna make some closer hills. So this is where I wanna merge closer with more distant. And so I'm going to, uh, mm, how about just to be on the safe side? How about just to be on the safe side? I continue this in case I don't overlap it later. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get to the other parts of the painting in the foreground and be like, uh oh, I didn't do anything on that background. So just in case I don't put a big rock over the top of this, I'm gonna match that color and move it over just a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe a little more red there. Just blend it into here. Just some similar color that I've already got on there to give me a impression of background rocks going off that direction. I'm just trying to make it blend smoothly into what I've what I've already got here. So a lot of that's probably going to get covered up, but I just want to be on the on the safe side with it. So now I'm backing up a little bit, looking at the picture. I'm grabbing some of these real white spots, just barely touching these, my whitest areas, because to me that creates a texture that doesn't look as soft and distant. So I'm just grabbing these little spots where the white didn't mix just barely touching them like that to get the color to kind of wash out to more one one smooth color get a little more distance that way and now i'm going to go to the foreground and use darker colors i'm no longer going to just use this blue and red mix for the background so now i'm going to put maroon on there and I'm gonna put some black. Let's do maroon and black for the shadows. And let's just build a drop down that's gonna to go to the water. So we're gonna go right across here, 
put some hills. And what I want is like 75% mix. I want to be able to really see the difference there. So I'm just going to scoot the, scoot the camera over a touch. Give me a second to move this so that I can scoot my, scoot my body over a little bit more as well. I'm getting kind of close. I'm afraid I'm going to, going to knock it over. Let's go right there. Oh yeah, you can see that good. So maybe, maybe right in here. Do you do portraits though? Uh, someone asked that before. Do I do portraits? And so, no, I don't. So it is fair to say I'm not a portrait artist. I guess I haven't earned the title until I've done some portraits. <laughs> but I do know how to do portraits now because of a lot of research I've put into drawing faces in just the last few years, really. So if you look at my early videos where uh, I'm not sure how many I still have up where I've tried to draw people. Plenty of error for you to for you to uh, look at, you know, to see that I had struggles just like any anyone, and I just had to go find answers. You know, so many things that that so many results that I don't like in my painting I have found are just a product of not knowing, just needing answers. You know, you think, oh, I just don't have what it takes because it doesn't come intuitively for you. But I think it can be surprising what happens when you have knowledge and then just put in some hours applying knowledge rather than putting in hours guessing. So so many of us when we're trying to learn something, just put in hour after hour doing guesswork. Well, guessing takes a really long time to arrive at any kind of order or a good answer, you know, guessing. And so uh, I research, I find answers. That's my first priority when I'm trying to learn something. Okay, I'm going to stop jibber-jabbering and explain what I'm doing. Uh, the white is now going to go where I have the most color, not on the black areas, because I want that. That black has already mixed to give me a nice dark foreground shadow. The white is going to mix with the red, now to give me a brighter highlight. And then there's going to be intermediate red left over that will function as a midtone. So I'm trying to keep the white off of the black when I do this. And so this will, this will create some uh, texture on hills. So white here, here, see these red areas? This is where I'm gonna put white. And then I'm gonna look for lines. I'm gonna look for paths. Look how this path has more red. So this is a good spot to maybe make a little highlight of dirt coming down. And then I'm gonna hit the white enough times. You gotta, you gotta stay on that white until it's no longer white. Just like I put the blue and the green up in here, but then I stay on it. It's not gonna look good when you, when you first put it on because it has not yet become what it's meant for. <laughs> I'm trying to talk all deep. <laughs> okay, so you can see a lot of the red going away as I'm targeting those more more red areas. But look at this nice, nice soft light that it creates on a hillside coming down. If I just put that, that light color on these lighter areas. Okay, now watch this. This is fun to put bushes on it, I'm gonna to go to this phthalo green again, and I'm just gonna put a bunch of dabs of this all over these dark areas. And maybe I'll take some black and mix it in with it so that I get some nice dark shadows. So I've got kind of a black and green mix. I'm gonna put dark bushes all over this hill. So black and green. I got lots of paint. I don't need to worry about saving it. Black and green right here, here. And so as long as this is still wet, then I'm going to show you this cool thing that I can do. I 
putting those bushes coming right down into here. And here I want lots of lots of green coming into this. This is going to be hovering out over the water. We got lots of bright green. So we'll just kind of lose that that bush there. We'll let that dry and bring more bushes across. So maybe I'll focus on this area more. Let's put this bright green in here. Phthalo green. It's like a vivid green and not not bright. And then we've got a black and green mix. Okay, so now what I want to do is look for the bottom edges. All those little dots, they're not bushes yet. They don't need to be bushes. All I need to do is blend the bottom edge of every black blob that I see. Because if I blend that bottom edge a little bit, it's going to create a gradient that comes that where the ground comes out from under the bush. So I don't need this to look like like bushes at the moment. I just want to take all of these bottom edges and just barely grab them, barely touch them with the brush and get soft edges underneath. Because when your eye scans a, you know, when you look at, so you can feel this happening. You know, when you, when you look at a texture, you can feel, at least I can, and I feel my eyes scanning for edges and and then it finds top edges it doesn't find any bottom edges it finds things rising up and stopping it doesn't find things going down and stopping this creates a texture of bushes going up out of the dirt or some other thing you know some other thing that has objects that are emerging up from the color that's underneath so step 1 is just putting the blobs of color step two is getting the gradients under the shadows and then step three is putting the highlights on so now i'm going to take some yellow and everywhere i have these dark colors yellow is going to turn into a nice nice bright green for me so i'm going to put some here just little dots now i'm just aiming for the tops of my dark blobs i'm not going to call them bushes because that gets me distracted and then i start trying to paint bushes and the colors and the paintbrush don't do as much work for me because I start interfering with it, you know, trying to manually create these bushes. And, and I, I do uh, I do that a lot. I get obsessed with the details and I start just doing whatever it takes to get my vision to come to life. When I get there, when I'm like in creative mode and I've got something on my mind that I'm trying to create, but so much great results can come out of just a methodical technique. You know, I always loved watching Bob Ross. He had so many great techniques, awesome techniques that achieved the essence of something in seconds, you know, so fun. Those were the things that I really considered when I was, when I was trying to learn to paint. You know, my thoughts were, uh, there must be a way to get a get a look without trying to paint every pine needle on a tree, without trying to paint every leaf on a bush, every pebble on a rocky path. All right, now I've got an embankment, and I think it'd be cool if I had, you know, I didn't I didn't put it on the other one, but I think it'd be cool to have some uh, green foliage right on top of the water still so i'm going to put a little bit more now nah, we'll do that later now nah, let's move on it's fun to move on okay so now i'm going to take this over a little more and what i want to do is gradually merge this now into the background so maybe some areas are going to have some of this ground getting closer so let's go back to our ground color. So watch how I can just do this right on top of, of my bushes. Right here. Brush it across. Don't worry about losing stuff. You know, we can resurrect it. Then grab the black and green and start putting little dots in here. And I'm going to let them mix with this background, just like I did 
with that thalo green and the thalo blue to make those distant bushes, but these are closer. So I'm gonna add black to it. So now I'm putting the green on there as well. Remember I had that black and green mix for these shadows. And then it's gonna just move in these horizontal paths and maybe get bigger and darker as I come closer. And now the ground kind of goes up and over right there. And I can put a few little splashes of yellow on top for some nice bright sunlight. And again, if I just touch the bottom edge of those yellow blobs, then they uh, emerge out of the bush a little more and don't look like just a blob of paint. They create the illusion of light coming out of shadows. All right, and so now maybe I drop a little bit more down in here. And so I'm just gonna do a little bit more of that same effect right over here, maybe add a little more on this side as well. So over here, I want more of that light color in, in the foreground. And then, you know, we need some of this. That's gotta go into the shadow back here. Let's just add a little bit of that, a little bit of that blue going across. Make a darker hill back here, maybe overlapping. The blue kind of turns it a little bit green, so maybe it's just covered with some, with some foliage. Put a little bit of white for some sunlight hitting that. And then just horizontal patterns. I'm just touching the canvas like this, just keeping the texture of every, every brush stroke, every shape is a stretched out one. That's the important thing to make distant, distant ground. All right, let's put a little bit more of this in place, get a nice, nice heavy base to work with here. And then let's put the black bushes in place. These are the closer bushes. And I'm just kind of making a dotted line going across, maybe make a couple more dotted lines a little bit above it. And don't be afraid to hit those dotted lines and destroy them a little bit. And target the bottom edges. Put a little phthalo green in there. Make it greener. Then I'm going to try to blend these bottom edges a little bit more. Make sure that there's no no real sharp bottom edges so I get a texture of things emerging upward and then put yellow, pure yellow highlight. This is a light yellow, so it works for this. This yite, light, yite, this yite lello. That happens to me all the time. Can't talk as fast as I think when it comes to the painting. Now, when it comes to math, <laughs> it's a different story. Okay, let's put little dots of this. I'm just putting little dots going across here to kind of blend the foreground into the background. Wherever you put a little dot of some kind of a dark greenish bluish color, it's probably gonna look like some kind of a bush back there just because of the color relationship and the expectation that's that we have to see that, you know. There, now I've got a little bit better transition into this into this front cliff dropping down on this edge. This feels to me like it could just kind of, doesn't that feel like it could just drop down right there, like a little valley coming through? So maybe I'll, maybe I'll run with that idea. Just make this go right down in here. Put a little bit of a highlight on this side of it. So wherever I already have red areas, look, I can take this light red highlight, aim for the base. So let's mix a light. This is maroon and white. And if I just aim for the lower portion of my red areas down here. So here's that red area. The lower portion of it is here causes it to swoop out and I and I get this 
more 3D shape by doing that. So here I'm just putting highlight on the right side and I'll kind of bring that over here. And I was thinking maybe there's a ridge that comes down here, breaks through this, this clip a little bit, which means I need to leave a darker edge right here. So that's gonna have a shadow on it right there that slopes over into that, I don't know. Okay, I think we're good to go on this clip. We'll do a little bit more over here and then we'll be ready to do water. So why don't we, I need to start making these, I need to start making these live streams shorter. And so I want to give those who want to follow along a chance to practice this, come back with questions, we can talk about them. And uh, why don't I just fire this up to uh, tomorrow morning? We'll just do Friday morning. I haven't done that yet and start putting some water in. I'm just going to do shorter shorter episodes of this. So we've been going now, started at 9, 10, 17, an hour is a good amount of time. I think this is a good good time to cut it off. So uh, tomorrow morning I'll do some water on this, and we'll try to keep it under an hour again, and I'll show you, uh, show you some good techniques that don't involve uh, tedious details of trying to separate the face of the wave, the back of the wave. I like to work that way and really think it through, but you don't have to. Just getting the right combination of, of colors in there and minding your texture like this. You can do water that looks looks as nice as this, this background. Oh, so that is how you get it to first dislike. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure I'm following that there. <laughs> hey, Joe, it's cool to catch you live. Find your videos so informative. I'm watching from Southern Ontario. Hey, all right, cool. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to throw a little bit more of the same kind of light and shadow on these clips coming down. And I need plenty of paint, so don't forget paint. When you're doing a painting, don't forget paint. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. But, but you know, if you uh, put a lot of paint on the canvas, it gives you something to stir around. Okay, so again, I'm going to target my more red areas. So the red has mixed with the black. None of it looks like this anymore. And you know what I'm going to do to curve? I want to curve this toward me. Why don't we just do that real quick? So if I go more red in here, okay, like, like this, similar to this balance, let's get more black. I'm just putting more and more paint so that it's not going to dry on me. It's going to stay real heavy. I'm going to come back and mix it. But as I go over to here, I'm going to use a lot more black. And that's going to, this is also getting bigger and higher. So I'm going to start making this turn into like a, a rocky cliff. It goes up. And so here, here's a fun trip. Let's make this go up here. It's This is facing away from the sun. Now it's a shadow. You know, so here I'm going to highlight the red areas. Because that's where I want my color is where the sun is striking this. So I'll do less and less. Sticking on just the areas that have the most of that maroon color. And then I'm going to keep blending this white until it's no longer white. And I'm just moving quickly so that I, I really can't be accurate. I'm, I'm, I'm being messy. It's hitting some of the black. But generally, it's staying more on the red than it is on the black because that's what I'm aiming for. And so I've just got I've just got this back and forth crisscrossing up and down texture. We're gonna just lose that bush. It dried. <laughs> kind of lost that shadow right there too. Time to stop. Okay, so you can see that I started to overmix, started actually losing shape there. So that that just means it's time to stop. And so I'm just gonna get these whitest white areas. Now over here where this is starting to face the other direction, I'm gonna put white on the black now. I'm gonna aim for the blacker areas 
So here's a blacker area, here's a blacker area, here's a blacker area. And the color that's left behind is going to be the ridges that are kind of facing toward me. So I'm going to put just up and down stripes of that. It's going to be gray. So here, here's some blacker color. Let's go right in here. I'm going to stay off this more red area. So see how that kind of comes toward me because of the color. And then this here, let's get closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So again, I'm just trying to mind the texture. And I'm gradually reversing to putting the white on the black instead of putting it on the red. So let's do a little bit more and we'll start building a cliff going up. We've got black and red right here. A little more red and I'm using a lot more black now. Okay, so we've got black and red. We want to make a cliff. I'm going to put that white on the black areas. Here's a black area, here's a black area, black area, black area, black area. Then I'm going to start just mixing it, making some shapes that are no longer so much lighter. That white is real, real light, but I'm just going to do this. And this is how we can get more of a reflective color. It looks like it's maybe just turning turning away from me. The grayer color kind of turns away. Well, the darker, redder color aims, aims more toward me. Right here, some, some blacker area. Let's go up here. So, so you can control how, how gray or how red you want this to be. And with every stroke I make, it kind of, it's like using a chisel. It almost carves out the look of a, of a rock face as I progress this direction. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make these two things kind of gradually change into each other. And let's put a few, few little bushes in here to finish her off. A little bit of black right in here and then phthalo green on top of that black. And when I get way down here, this is in a shadow, so I'm thinking not nearly as much yellow. Here, I'm just going to make these dark, dark plants going up this little, looks like a little ravine now, kind of coming in between these, these hills. Now I'm going to aim for the bottom edges of these. Break that one apart, break this one apart. Breaking up the bottom edges of all my dark little bushies. All right, looks like I got most of those under edges. And then I'll put a little bit of yellow on the, the upper edges. Just a little bit, because this is going down into a shadow. So we won't, go, we won't go overboard with it. We'll just do tiny little bits here. Hit it a few times so it gets, gets darker. Okay. That's a good stopping point. Stop right there, and then we're ready to put some put some water in here in the background. Well, that's good progress for a day. I'm I'm very happy with that. Uh, I have I've noticed that second attempts for me always come out better than the first because. I am such a just such a researcher by nature. I just can't stand to not have an answer. So I attack a project by looking for the answers. How is this achieved? You know, I'm not I'm not after the finished product as much as having the answer. So when it gets to the second project, it's fun because now I'm applying everything that I learned on the first. So just about every painting I've done, I've done twice, usually back to back on top of itself, which doubles the time on the job and takes the profit out of it. But you know. It's fun to find those answers. Looks just like what I saw on a trip to Arizona a few years back. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I marvel at it. Every time we drive across the Arizona desert, I always just marvel at the vast 
space, sloping hills, I just am in awe of it. Wow, thank you for saying, wow, Gabriella, thank you. I noticed that the uh, live stream keeps on, keeps on kicking for a little bit after I end the stream. There's, there's a little bit of time to finish up conversations, so that, that's kind of neat. Trying to follow along using a digital app on the iPad, tricky. Is there an app you think might mimic the paint best? Oh, I'm working on it. I'm trying to build that exact thing. I actually have a pretty good working model that I just haven't released. Something that mimics paint mixing. I know. I don't know why this hasn't been tackled yet. You know, turning digital colors into mimicking in, uh, paint. Paint colors would be really helpful. But, you know, what I recommend if you go digital is just understanding how to mix the red, green, blue primaries. It, it's probably a more proficient way to recreate what you see is doing that. There's just slight differences. So when you're mixing, you know, you just have to use a, you just have to use more green in, in everything. When you're mixing a dark color with a light color, you just got to throw some green in that mix when you're going digital because it's always going to bend toward purple. Every time you mix blue with anything, whether it's yellow, orange, red, it always is going to be more purple than what paint would do. So just remember, whatever I do with paint, think a little more green if you're doing it digital. That's the best advice I can give for now. I, I wish I could solve that problem of the paint simulation. Have you ever painted from the perspective of looking from the ocean onto the shore? I've been asked that before. I want to do the backside of waves, and I'm stuck. That is a good question for a future video. That is a very good question. The backside of waves. What would that look like? Man, well, if you apply just the rules of water and reflection to the shape that you know that it is, that's the best guidance I can give. If you get if you get my, uh, my lesson on waves, then I go into much greater length explaining the actual anatomy, the different parts of the wave, what we're looking at, so that you can see see what's going on. That it might help to have that understanding. But I have yet to tackle that perspective. That'd be a good one. The hard part is the mixing on the canvas. Finding the right tool is the tricky part. Thanks for the advice. Oh, oh good. Oh, you're welcome. No, thank you for watching. From, from a boat, backside of a wave. Oh, yeah, that'd be a cool, cool picture. What brand of acrylics do you use? Sherwin-Williams is what I'm currently using. You can see more on the FAQ at my, my website. Are you using canvas? Yes, canvas. It's a drop cloth. It's the same thing as all these guys down here that I've got under my paints. And so I actually just just uh, took an old drop cloth, stretched on the board, the uh, plywood board that I nailed to the wall right there. <laughs> Use those clamps to pull it tight, and I'll just take it off when I'm done. Roll it up. OK, and so uh, what else we got here? Uh, Chani, Chani Noise says, are you using, oh no, I already answered that. Do you have any video on Bougainville bushes? Bougainvillea, Bougainvillea, Bougainvillea bushes? Okay, send me a picture, joe at muraljoe.com. That's my email. Send me a picture of what that is. I don't have any videos on that, but I'm curious now. Do you gesso the canvas? No, I just put paint on it. Uh, I'm convinced that gesso doesn't accomplish more than these wall paints. I'm just using wall paints out of a can. Hi, Joe. Ever use a palette knife? Yes, yes, I have used a palette knife. Just out of curiosity, what could happen, you know? And, uh, you know, one thing I think is really cool, not, not painting a picture, is... Uh, using a palette knife to apply paint to a wall, you get trowel marks, as you know, and you can burnish those like plasters. So you get some really cool effects by troweling paint together instead of brushing paint together. 
just for a cool wall finish, just with a couple of colors. I really like to look at it. Uh, doing, you know, the imitation Venetian plaster made out of acrylic material. You would, it was like troweling on thick paint and then you burnish it. I always loved the look of that, although it's not the most practical finish, but troweling paint, I think is super cool. So I'll have to try a painting, a palette knife painting, it'd be fun. Well, rolling up your canvas cracked paint after a while. Mm, after a long while, it probably could. Yeah, but it would take a long time. This, this acrylic paint stays flexible for quite a long time. And so I guess I would just hope that something permanent would happen to the painting before the paint gets that brittle. So if the paint is sheltered, not exposed to UV, not in the elements, it acrylic, or, or at least this, this wall paint is very flexible. It'll stay flexible enough to roll up a picture for years. Tend to struggle with realism, making the paint colors match uh, nature's colors. Do you have a specific reference video in which you go into more detail? If you just search my channel with the keywords color theory, color theory and paints is a playlist. I, re I highly recommend that to answer some questions. So it's not going to walk you through a painting like this, but it'll answer some, some questions about why it's so hard to what we have to do in order to imitate what we're looking at with paint colors. Do you stretch the canvas after the painting? Well, I've never done it this way before, so it's very hard to stretch a canvas that's been painted. You can't really stretch it much. So uh, that's why I just stretched it with these clips, and then I would just form it around a, a, a appropriately sized frame afterward because it's, it's going to keep its shape after that. I'd like to learn. I'm from Rome in Italy. All right, cool. Man, I want to visit that place, Rome. I I, uh, I I get a big kick out of seeing old ruins. We have old ruins here in the desert in Arizona, but not from a thousand years ago, from a few hundred years ago, you know. And uh, so you know you have you have uh, this place if you drive east from Flagstaff, uh, like Twin Arrows. There's a place called Two Guns and a place called Twin Arrows right close together. <laughs> Kind of a funny relationship for the two exits close to each other, two guns and twin arrows. But uh, out there in the desert, there's these old ruins, an old library, an old zoo or something like that. And I love looking at all the rocks that they built things out of. Now there's an old uh, train trestle. There's a bridge going across the canyon. I love it. Welcome to Italy. Oh, thank you. I want to go there. OK, anyone interested? in digital painting, try Blender. Oh, that's a free program? Hmm. I was looking at a video about Blender. I was really impressed. Uh, and someone, I wish I could reference the video right now, did a real good job of explaining uh, how to manipulate surface using using uh, roughness, using roughness, how many different things you get. Actually, that was helpful for me, looking at that and applying that to painting, considering what makes a different surface. Yeah, man, I recommend if you are used to only working with paints, I highly recommend experimenting with digital painting. And if you um, are just digital, I highly recommend experimenting with uh, physical paint, you know, liquid paints, because uh, learning the differences between the two and how and how to bring them together it is uh, makes has made me so much more proficient at immediately arriving at my goal that I'm imagining color-wise. I, I want to see this kind of light on this kind of object that's this color at this distance with this atmosphere. I can immediately make that decision, understanding what the results are going to be because of just the time put into researching what is used digitally versus what, what paint does. Is there anything? You, anything you want. Oh, don't understand that comment. Hi from Caracal, 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 the Caribbean. Thank you for telling me it's in the Caribbean. Come to paint waves. Oh man, I would love to do that. <laughs> Welcome to Germany. Oh, I did go to Germany once. We went there. It was cool. 
I liked it, but I was too much of a young teenage brat to appreciate the, uh, the I was culture shocked. I was mad because I, I couldn't find ketchup for my burgers. I just wanted a cheeseburger with ketchup on it. I couldn't find cereal and milk in the morning for breakfast. I couldn't find ketchup on my hamburger. You know, I, I am such a different person than I was then. It's funny looking back at, at how fragile my world was. It got outside of it, went overseas, learned how people aren't are, are not the same every way you go, and the ability to adjust is very helpful and valuable. I just wish I could have appreciated what I was looking at then. I hear you gotta have ketchup. I don't even eat ketchup anymore. <laughs> I switched to mustard. I'm on a mustard kick now. <laughs> All right. I gotta end this video. I got stuff to do today. So uh, come back same time tomorrow morning. We'll do a little bit of water on this painting and have your thalo blue, thalo green, and uh, red and white ready. Those are the colors we're going to put into the water. Okay, this uh, live chat, I guess, is going to keep on going a little bit after I push this button. Yeah, I'm still here. I pushed the button, but it's not ending. All right, there we go.